Jacob Stevens, uh, welcome back to another race report. I know that you missed the pre-race. Uh, so did Logan. Uh, he was your stand-in. He had a, a technical difficulties at the track, but um, you were getting surgery. And how are you? I'm doing all right. Um, definitely was a rough last couple of days, but um, we're getting better every day. And you know, we started physical therapy, so um, we're just going to keep pushing forward and hopefully be back riding soon. And the doctor was so good. You have 98% mobility and <laughs> we'll be back racing by the next round. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. I already got the bikes ready. <laughs> well, it, it happens. No, not a bad race to miss Glenn Hallen round five, uh, world off-road championship series. Um, not one of my favorite places to go, but it is considered my local race. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and a lot of people ask why I didn't go. Well, I had a honeydew list and you have to take care of your wife when she asks. And uh, my role for traveling has changed a bit. And, um, you know, I just needed to be home taking care of my wife. Yeah. Sometimes uh, there's bigger things in life, right? Well, yeah, because, you know, for 30 years, I avoided the <laughs> the, the normal civilian life, you know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now I'm I'm paying for it now. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Keep her happy, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I know that you didn't uh, get some information and get to see how the track was. I got to see some video. It looked like they had an outstanding course. Yeah, no, I, from what I've heard and, and who I've talked to, you know, I heard that they everybody was super happy with the track. And um, I know they got to abuse the hills a little bit that they haven't in a few years. Um, so everybody was pretty happy with that. Um, I don't think anybody really had anything bad to say about it. Usually it's super flat and high speed and it kind of just feels like one big motocross track for 90 minutes. But um, I know they got to do a little bit more desert this year. And um, I believe everybody was pretty happy with it. I, it's almost like the works crew went into overtime on setting that place up. Yeah. I mean, they, they got to use a lot of the trails that we've all seen for years, but I don't know that they've used them in, in many years. So um, the works crew definitely got to work and and uh, made the track super good for the riders. And, you know, I, from what I'm told, everybody had a pretty good weekend. Yeah, that's that's great. It, it's great to hear that they that they stepped it up on, on you know, at Glen Helen, because some of the last few courses were, you know, not yeah. uh, as. As off roady as I would like them to bed. Yeah, yeah, no, some of them. There are some that are very, very off-road like, you know, I'd say Prim is a very off-road track and, you know, Mesquite's very off-road and, um, but there are some that feel like, you know, we don't get a, like Glen Helen specifically always felt like to me, you know, I've raced it three times now and, and um, it always felt like to me that it just felt like a giant motocross track, super high speed, not really any off-road desert sections and, you know, that's, it's tough enough to race desert for 90 minutes, let alone race basically motocross for 90 minutes. Yeah. One, one year we went there and it was the whole infield was, you were in the infield for a majority of the race. Yeah. So many turns, there were tunnels. I mean, it, there was, so, there was so much stuff going on. It was unbelievable. Yeah wasn't my favorite race because I was riding a 660 Raptor and the, <laughs> the tight technical course did not help me at all. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's definitely come down a little bit over the years. I feel like back in the day, it was a lot more uh, desert, you know, racing, but um, you know, they do what they, they do with the tracks. They do what they're allowed to do with the tracks. And, you know, we just, we're just showing up to race. Well, it was nice and green. You know, the, yeah. the scenery was awesome. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're talking about stuff that people probably really don't care about, but <laughs> the photos, I, I saw a picture of Logan Huff and, you know, there's yellow flowers and I think some purple and uh, some other colored stuff on the side of the trail. And I'm just like, this doesn't look like a works race photo. <laughs> you <laughs> Looks know, like they're back east racing the GNCC. Yeah. Yeah. Usually it's brown. I mean, yeah. come on. This is awesome. Yeah. But uh, that's great that they had a good turnout. And I guess the weather was pretty good too. Yeah. My parents said it was a little chilly. Um, 
on the first couple of days, but I feel like Sunday was a pretty good day. I think it was pretty warm for the riders. Well, that, that being said, uh, how did your dad and mom say the turnout was? Uh, they did great. Um, it was the triple header, you know, side by side squads and dirt bikes. So, um, you know, they did great. You know, there was a ton of people there and, you know, when you mix all three series together, there's, you know, it's always a pretty, pretty big turnout. Oh yeah. That's awesome. You, you know, in the, in the women's pro class, you know, Tori's kept it perfect so far through yep. round five. Um, Lane got on the box with her yep. and uh, so did Heidi. Yep. Um, you know, they're mixing it up pretty good. I mean, I don't know a lot of specifics about that race other than that, you know, Tori's well, keeping finished. It. Yeah, I know uh, um, Tori, you know, she's undefeated this year. And, um, you know, I know the girls behind her are working hard, but um, I know uh, Dakota Hibbler had a good battle with Heidi Coleman, you know, for the whole race. And Heidi ended up getting around her towards the end. I'm not sure exactly, you know, what had happened or if, if you know, she just was the faster girl that day. But um, Heidi got on the, the podium and um, I heard Lane rode really well to get, you know, second. And, um, you know, those girls got their work cut out for them if they're gonna you know try to give tori a run for their money exactly exactly i mean they better step it up you know, yeah she's getting away from them mm -hmm. uh, i checked uh, i checked out some of the uh the uh, open a and the production a classes you know cole fryer and gage are having a pretty good battle in yep. uh production a but they're also having a pretty good battle in pro-am pro -Am. As well. yeah mm-hmm yeah, no, Pro-Am, I heard, was a really good race. I know Cole didn't get the greatest of starts. Um, he ended up working his way to the front. Um, I think Wyatt Rock pulled the whole shot, and uh, something must have happened to him. I don't know if he broke or, or got stuck or crashed or something like that, but um, I know he led, you know, I think half the race. And then, um, you know, he finished two laps down off the, off the leader, but, you know, Cole got in front and, you know, led the rest of the race. Uh, Gage Lever, he started... Um, I think like ninth or 10th, um, he worked his way all the way to second. So he had a really good race. I'd, I'd like to see what those, those two can do, you know, both of them getting a good start and, you know, battling the whole race and seeing how that turns out. Yeah. I think that would be great. Uh, I, they get to race head to head in the, in both classes, yeah. you know, the production, a, yeah. the open, the open a class, you know what? I checked it out and I'm for some reason, um, I can't in, in pro-am gauge is first Cole is second and lane is third. Yeah. You know, yeah, so it's pretty crazy. Gage, Cole and, and lane hmm. are, are top three in points. I think I have open a on here somewhere. No, I don't, I was just looking at it and why I can't remember. Uh, I think rock won that. Um, um, I think he did too, actually. But he hasn't he raced enough too. of them in that class to be uh, that far up in the point standings. I think it was him and, and Joshua Jackson that were in open A, if I stand corrected. Yeah, it was him and Joshua that raced uh, open A. I think they had a pretty good race from what I heard as well. Right. And and isn't Joshua on the podium in the podium? Yeah, the yeah he got well, he got on the podium at at this past race in Pro-Am. Um, I know he had a pretty good race. He st I think he started well and just kind of rode as a good pace and, and finished, you know, on the box. That's freaking awesome. I like to see the depth they have there. You know, it looks the, the pro-am class looks like a, a variety of people are wa uh, riding it. Yeah. And then they have pretty consistent amount of people racing at every race. Yeah. So, uh, you also had some guys come up from Mexico and race it, which was, which is really yeah. good. Well, yeah, and the pro class, there's a lot of people that signed up for the pro class at this race as well. I think they had like 11 or 12 people racing. That's great. Yeah. Well, Austin Baxter got on the podium. Yeah. Check yeah, he rode a, rode a really consistent race. Um, I didn't get to talk to him, but uh, I know uh, Braxton broke early in the moto. I think around lap two, he blew, blew a motor. And, you know, he ended up pushing his bike back to the pits. And um, I know they swapped a motor, but I know they didn't get him out in time for him to get um at least halfway or laps made um so he ended up getting getting no points which is really gonna throw a wrench in in his season here he's gonna have to you know crack down and really focus on finishing these races and, and getting good results 
Um, but, you know, hats off for him for pulling a motor in the pits and going back out. He didn't have no seat. He didn't have no rear plastics. Um, I think they just threw the tank back on and, and he, he went out. Um, it was such a big point swing. He went from second in points not too far behind Bo to he's 30 points behind Bo or more. And he's 15 points behind Damon and yeah. Damon's uh, 17 or 18 behind Bo. Yeah. You know, and um, gosh, uh, who is the freaking um, – fourth place in points is one point behind it's got to be baxter right yep it's austin baxter yeah it's got to be he's he's had some good finishes this year so far he's been he had one bad race the race that he that he helped Bo. yep and everything else has been you know in the top five i believe yep. and he's got two podiums back to back he got one at Blythe and one here yep yeah so he oh. that, that class is it's shaping up to have some really good stuff. You know, I don't know how close Travis was to Bo, but Bo oh, got out front. Early. I heard, yeah, Bo got out front early. I know Travis didn't get the best of starts, but I know he got into second relatively fast. And um, from, you know, what I heard, they they battled it out for a majority of the race. I think Travis is, he's really, he's getting closer, I think. Um, I think Bo still has that, you know, end of the moto sprint. Um, I think that's where Travis kind of falls off a little bit, or maybe he gets a little, you know, winded and starts to make a little mistakes. But I mean, we all know Bo's perfect all the way through the race and Reno you know, rarely makes mistakes. So, you know, he's a hard competitor and um, you know, I think you know, from what I'm seeing, Travis is getting closer and closer every race. So um, it'll be cool to, to, it's cool to see them mixing it up more this year than they were in the past couple. I think that, I think he's better on the Yamaha. Yeah, than he was on the Honda, it suits him better. I think it's easy for him to ride. Yeah, I think so as well. I think if he could just uh, minimize his mistakes, get some better starts, and um, you know, just keep clicking off those fast laps, and you know, working, working hard, and I think it's it's going to be a a matter of time until he's winning more races. I think he's in motorcycles. I think he's leading the 125 Pro class that they started. I think he is as well. Um, I know he didn't, uh, he, I think he won the last two or three of them. I know he won the last one and yeah. I seen him on the podium last time too, but I think he got second. Yeah. Maybe it was second. Uh, he's been on the podium, I think just about every single race. So, um, I know he's doing well in points. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I think he's, I think he's leading the pro 125 class. Yeah. Um, which, you know, he's, he's still riding a two wheeler and racing an ATV I mean, all the same you, weekend. Yeah. All you need to do is get a UTV and it'd be like, well, be like a triple sport. Yeah. You know, I'm a triathlete. Yeah. That's the one thing I didn't see. Did Bo make it on the podium in the UTV class? Oh, I'm not sure. I didn't see anything about it. I just saw the quad stuff. Yeah. I didn't see, well, usually I see a, a photo of it. Yeah. I didn't see it's crazy because when they do all the when they do all the races in one weekend, you know, they do so many works racing posts that, you know, you're bound to miss a few. Um, I know they I mean, they post every single, you know, pro or pro am class on dirt bikes and then all the quad classes and then all the UTV classes. So I know I didn't get to see every post, um, but I didn't see any side by side posts. Yeah, I didn't find out who won until late sunday evening for some reason i yeah. didn't post the quad oh yeah photo yeah I, I knew pretty quickly after the race on sunday my dad called me right away and kind of gave me the rundown of the pro race yeah well i can never get your dad to call me so <laughs> which is I surprising because he's I'm always not on a the kid. <laughs> i'm not a kid that's you know what he expects right yeah he did call me immediately after i got out of surgery which they were on their way home for already so Oh, they came home. They came home broke. Sunday. Well, I guess I did surgery Friday. Never mind. They called me Sunday as soon as they left the track, probably just to check in on me, make sure I was good. Right. Was there anybody taking care of you? 
Uh, yeah, my brother's mom. She's luckily a nurse, so she stayed with me the first two nights. Nice. Um, it felt like I was staying at the hospital still, so that was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you had somebody that has said somebody there. Uh, where you, I know you text me afterwards, yeah, and I was thinking, Jacob, you know that's great that you text me, buddy, but aren't you supposed to be resting? Yeah, I tried to let everybody know when I got out of surgery that I was good, and you know. Everything went well. Um, I, I figured you'd be a little loopy. I was loopy, but I figured I might as well get my texts out as soon as possible. <laughs> I know Paul was freaking and, you know, my parents were freaking and, you know, so I just wanted to to send everybody a, you know, I'm good text before well, I went home awesome. and slept. That's awesome that, that you got that taken care of like that. You know, round six. Um, is going to be where for works cedar city i don't i've been there but i hate it to be completely honest with you yeah but um i mean it's a good track it's very very tight um which i guess it's good to mix it up you know from going from a high speed track like glen helen to a really really tight turny track like cedar um it's hard though. Cedar's difficult, you know, with the bike, with the elevation that they're at and how the bikes run. And, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into that race. I feel like everybody's, you know, a little underpowered with the elevation change. And, um, I know I struggled a bunch last year with, you know, how the bike was running and, um, you know, the track was just, I just personally thought that it wasn't very flowy, you know, like you couldn't find a, a nice, comfortable groove, I felt like it was just, you know, constant, like shifting, constant braking, accelerating. It, it just, it's, it's a, it's a technical, you know, very difficult track to go to. Um, definitely not my favorite one. <laughs> you think, do you think that'll help Travis in dealing with Bo a little because that Yamaha turns really well? Yeah, I think so. I don't know that it'll be a deal breaker because i know you know doug and and Bo have that honda set up really well um and i know that you know doug and travis are still working towards you know getting that yamaha perfect um so i don't know that it'll definitely be a deal breaker uh, machine versus machine um i definitely think that it's going to be a a good race i think travis definitely has potential to to give Bo a run here uh, i know the you know the titan technical tracks are are definitely more fond of mistakes and, you know, it's a lot easier to make that mistake or go into a corner, you know, a little bit slower than you did last lap and, um, you know, go into a little too fast and, and slide out or spin out. So um, the tighter races are definitely a little bit more technical. So I think it'll, it'll mix it up a little bit more with, um, you know, people making mistakes throughout the race and, and seeing where everybody finishes. No, I think it's going to be great. I had, you know, Braxton will come out, swinging i let's just hope that he doesn't overextend thinking he's got to gain all his points back in one yeah. race because he's not just not going to do it yeah and that's that's where the maturity is going to come in with him um you know he's he's young he's you know he wants he wants to win just as bad as everybody else and um i know you know as young riders like that you know even when i was his age going out and you know having a bad race you know the next race you want to ride even a little harder and prove yourself but you know i hope he you know keeps a level head and rides how he knows how to ride um rides smart and you know gets through the race you know first or third or fourth or you know just you know get through the race finish the race get some good points and you know keep working towards getting back on the top of the box exactly i i mean i think travis is going to make it tough on him to get back on the top of the box and as austin baxter gains more confidence yeah you know, he's going to be coming too so yeah yeah, no, the podium's definitely getting a little bit more spicy than it than it has been in the past couple of years. You're definitely seeing some new faces on it, and uh, um, it's good. I think it's it's really cool to see, you know, everybody getting a little faster, everybody's getting a little better. Um, I'm sure excited to get back out and race with those guys. I can't. Why are you sitting on the couch so much, man? <laughs> I'd be out there if I could be. <laughs> Duct tape doc and super glue, dude. We'll figure it my, out. Okay. My doctor told me a sling for five weeks, so I don't know if I'm gonna make cedar. 
uh, you know, we'll just put both controls on the one side and you'll be good, right? Yeah, I just hold on with one hand and, you know, put the back brake and the shifter on the left side and you're see good. What you can do. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> you can glue that other hand to the handlebar. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It'd be like getting a blister afterwards when we peel it off. <laughs> yeah, I wish. That'd be good. It's all good, brother. Hey, thank you so much for sitting down with me and doing the race report. Um, you know, got to give a special shout out for Logan to try to stand in and, and help out. I know he was busy or he would have uh, came in, sat down with us. Um, you know, so I really appreciate him uh, doing his best to uh, to help out with us and, and, and try to stand in for you. Uh, he was looking forward to, to sitting down and talking with you as well. But uh, it, it, unfortunately, we couldn't link it up. But we'll do our best to make it happen again on another race. Cool. Sounds like a plan. I should be at Cedar City, so uh, we should be good to go on that one. Awesome. All right, brother. You have a great night.